the Latinos Out Loud podcast. <laughs> Yo, 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 I'm climbing, yo, 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 yo. Hey everyone. Hi, get comfortable. Have a seat, put the vacuum cleaner down, maybe put your car in neutral or slow it down a little. You're speeding anyway. Please check your speed limit. It's Rachel La Loca. And this is the Latinos Out Loud podcast, LOL, if you like acronyms like me. <laughs> and I have a very, very special guest with me, someone who I've known for quite some time, almost not three decades yet, <laughs> but shy of it by a few years. I would love for you to welcome founder, creator, activist, athlete, social entrepreneur, Georgina Miranda to the show. Hola. Hola. Thanks for having me. It's so fun. To I'm trying connect. to contain it, right? Like, she walked through the door and I was like, our flesh is finally meeting one another. Like, we have only been friends through virtual and then from my days at People in Espanol magazine, yeah. where I'm just going to say what it was. Okay, guys, check it out. Uh, one of the things I loved about my corporate career is like here, that rhymes, we rhyme a lot here. Um, <laughs> I got to highlight those Latino, Latina, X, Y, Z voices that were doing amazing things for our community through programs that were funded by certain advertisers. In the marketing department, I would often get to write advertorials, which is what it sounds like. It's an ad and editorial mashed together. And there was one particular advertorial that I had the luxury, the pleasure of working on for Ronald McDonald House Charities, the Acer Scholarship Fund, which if you are a high school student out there or if you are the parent of a high school student please look into the Acer Scholarship Fund there are a lot of becas a lot of grants out there for Latino A E I X Y students and thank you Ronald McDonald for not only giving us unhealthy french fries but for giving some of the students grants to some amazing universities so long-winded here we go dialing it back so I had to search for impactful Latinos, Latinas, just making strides in our community to highlight in this advertorial showcasing that you can do so many different things. A plethora of amazing careers await you with a college degree. And so Georgina Miranda, her bio came across my desk and I was like, yes, 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 and more yes. And then I reached out to your publicist and we were connected in 2007, y'all. And here we are today. She's now on my podcast. This is another full circle moment for me, which I love. I love just drawing circles, spirograph, compasses, all of it, you know what I mean? Um, that was a 90s toy I hope you guys played with. Remember the spirograph? It had like the cogs and you would like draw circles. Okay, dating myself. It was like around the light bright era. And she's here now, basically lighting up this room and she's very bright. You see what I did there? <laughs> Georgina, welcome. I sort of introduced you, but I would love for you to add color and more light <laughs> to how I explained what you do and who you are. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I love full circles too because, you know, this is what life's about. You never know why you met the person. There's always a reason. And here we are many years later, um, and it's been fun to follow your journey, oh, which is the one I'm this whole thing. <laughs> curious to learn more. And then, yeah, my, you know, life is not linear, guys, <laughs> anybody watching. So, yeah, we met, um, I was just kicking off an activism campaign to raise awareness around gender-based violence, and I had set the goal of completing what's called Explore Grand Slam, so that's climbing the highest peak on each continent and skiing to the North and South Pole. Um, wow. It's something that less than 20 women have done. Wow. I'm still not done yet, <laughs> um, and I'll explain why later, I'm sure. Um, that also, then, the reason why, you know, there's, I started off with gender-based violence activism, but then it also really opened to my eyes to what was happening in the planet. And so, you know, why is there only why is there less than 20 women lots of reasons and why are there not going to be so many people to finish this project is because to actually be able to go to the north pole north pole is getting more and more dangerous because the ice is so thin and so um 
you know, it really just brings a sense of urgency to the change that's happening in our world. Open my eyes to the connection between women and planet too. And if you look at the people that are most impacted by climate change around the world, it's marginalized communities and women. And so, um, yeah, that that whole journey continues, and um, I continue exploring in nature all over the world. It's my sacred space, my sacred healing space. And um, I think it really opened a portal to, to entrepreneurship. And so, you know, if there's any entrepreneurs watching out there, I mean, that's a mountain to climb every day. <laughs> this fusion of climbing and business is very unique. I, how did you come about this combination of exploring nature, doing this for, for activism and for causes, you climb for causes. I love alliteration too. Um, where, how did this dawn on you? Yeah, I mean the activism piece was was a little bit more s simple, just because I saw people running marathons to raise money for charity, bike rides, things like that, and I hadn't really seen a lot of people climbing mountains for charity. Full disclosure, I was not a mountaineer athlete ever. I was voted most improved in every sport I played. Whoa, I, whoa, whoa, really? <laughs> so you weren't even the athletic type when no, you started No, I couldn't this. run a mile when I, like, nothing. I just have, like, like the sad memory of, like, trying to join the track team in high school, and they put me on the mile run, and I was, like, the last person to come in by many minutes later. Oh, my God. And so, needless to say, I left the track team <laughs> after that. And so I used to love the shorts that the girls used to get to wear. That was my only motivation behind like even thinking of joining the track team. Anyway, I digress. Please continue. Yeah. But so with business, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I studied business in undergrad and then I went on to get my MBA. The focus was on entrepreneurship. But Let's just slow down a little because I love those two flexes real quick. Where did you get your undergrad? Where did you get your MBA from? Uh, the undergrad was at University of San Diego. I had a merit scholarship. So if you're watching, look for those scholarships because I had to fund my own way through school and uh, I, well, I didn't have any cash, so. Yeah, so the good <laughs> old FAFSA form. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Bringing back bad memories right now, that FAFSA form. So yeah, I got a merit scholarship to University of San Diego, thank goodness. And then um, I did my MBA at Loyola Marymount in LA. Yeah. And so, yeah. Okay, continue, because, you know, we got to talk about the education part of all this. Um, education is such a strong pillar in my family. I instill it in my children as well. And I just, sidebar, I cannot wait to see what they do in the future. Like, I can wait because I don't want them to grow up, because then that means I'm going to get old. Um, but, like, what colleges are they going to go to? Like, I am so excited about that journey. <laughs> You know, as a parent, like you want the best and I know what we can afford and what we can't, but hey, Ronald McDonald House Charities, I'm going to be hollering at you, okay? Mm. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm giving McDonald's way too much burn here. So continue telling us about how you stumbled upon this fusion. So you got your MBA. Yeah, no, so I was in the corporate space, but I always knew that that was not going to be my place. I still have corporate cl clients now, so full, you know, which I'm really happy to work with. Um, I've had a couple startups leading up to the one I have now, um, and I was a management consultant for many, many years, focusing on helping companies through every kind of transformation you can think of, from people, process, technology, all over the world. And um, I will just say, like, education is definitely important. It was ingrained in me that that's how I could have a different life than that yes. of my upbringing. But I will equally say, like, the mountains and travel and exposure to other c cultures have been, like, an incredible way to learn about myself, about other people, about the world, um, really connecting the dots of, like, what's needed today, which is, like, we need a bond as humanity. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of other things that have happened. I, I really went deep into meditation and spirituality as well, which also thanks to the mountains because, you know, they're they push you you know you're at like a fine line of life and death sometimes and um Oof. that just causes you to go inward more and more and more you got to dig deep and um and so yeah the entrepreneurship side there was just always a passion there to do my own thing and based off the other two companies that i had helped start or started myself I also really just saw the huge gap for female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, and in my corporate career, I saw the huge gap that women in higher levels of leadership were experiencing. 
And so, you know, hence came She Ventures, which was initially an event series by the other company I had that I had to close. We couldn't get funding. Uh, and we would host uh, events all across North America. And the, the theme was generally just choose adventure as a way of life, really mm-hmm. encouraging women to choose adventure as a way of life. We would get uh, local female founders, leaders, activists, athletes to come speak. And our first event was in San Francisco. I was living at the time, and like 225 women showed up yes. organically. Yes. So, and I would, and then afterwards they were like, "But I'm experiencing this in my industry, and I'm experiencing this in mine." And you know, and then they they gave me like, "I need coaching. I need consulting for my business, or I need this." And, and so that's how She Ventures developed. It was very organic. And it was also like life, you know, sometimes closes the door and then there's another one and you have a choice, you know, like I was really, um, I went through a big burnout when I had to close the other Mm. startup. It's hard to close a business. But like I tell every entrepreneur, most successful entrepreneurs have had so many businesses and a lot of them didn't work out. I'm learning that as well. And so, yeah, they're like... But everything you learn and it pushes you, I do think you're like, we're, we're guided and if we're open... And so it's like, what is this all trying to tell me? And, and in my case, and I teach um, entrepreneurs and businesses of all kinds on all sizes around the power of brand. What I had done is I created a brand of She Ventures, women that are out there breaking barriers, like doing whatever they want, choosing yes. adventure as a way of life. And that was way more powerful than this other startup thing that I had. It feels powerful. It feels like an enlightening moment. You know, right now I am fizzling out a business. And you're right. You would think that it would be easier to just close the door and like, you know, oh my God, my accountant hit me up yesterday. She's like, nope, we need these numbers from 2021, 2022. And I was like, my bank account is closed. I don't know how to get these numbers. So now I've got to call this one and that one and ella y el y nosotros and just figure this out. Yeah. But you're right. You kind of know, you see the light behind the door opening. It's like, ah, and you hear the harps playing. So, okay, these climbs. This is amazing, y'all. I mean, is this all penetrating real quick? Like, this woman next to me has climbed six, the highest points on six of the seven continents in the world. Okay? Um, you know, there's seven, right? Okay. So, okay, talk to us about those points what are those six highest peaks that you have climbed yeah sure so there's actually like two lists so technically it's eight peaks and then the two poles so the north and south pole Um, and then the himalayan region if you're familiar with nepal himalayan region pakistan is is considered the third pole and it's actually the one that's facing like the fastest acceleration of climate um, impact negative climate impact and so all the, the 14 highest mountains in the world all live in that space. Um, and then, so my project started with the highest peak on each continent. So um, in 2008, I went to Russia and I climbed Mount Elbrus, the highest peak in Europe. Then I went to Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. And then um, I went to Aconcagua in Argentina and uh, Australia, I think happened between that. <laughs> I'm like now losing the sequence. And then I went to climb the highest peak in North America, Denali, which its nickname is Denali because she's a beast. Wow. <laughs> and I call all the mountains she, by the way. So if you hear me say that and you're like, what is she talking about? <laughs> I love that. That's like how people call their cars she, yeah. right? Like yeah. mountains are your vehicle. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, you know, so I, the <laughs> Denali was really, really tough. And for me, it was, I, I need to prove to myself that I could actually climb that mountain before I ever stepped foot on Mount Everest. Oof. So, um, and that mountain challenged me. I almost didn't make the summit. I got frost nip, which is the beginnings of frost bite on two of my fingers. Uh, it was really, really tough. And oh my God. It, and it's this thing that happens on mountains that it's, it's so hard and it's sometimes really painful on your body. Like I had blisters that had like gone down almost to the bone on my heels. Like it was, all these things happened. And yet when I was down safe and I was like, 
Everest, let's do this, you know, and most people are like, why would you put yourself through that again? Well, I want to hear more about this process. Like, I don't know how many mountain climbers y'all have spoken to. Uh, this is my first. So, like, for me, this is such a foreign process. Like, we were talking earlier, we climbed the steps of Washington Heights and the Bronx, and I, like, have to grab my knees and be like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Like, that's a big feat for some of us. Yeah. Uh, like, what is this, like, mentally? and what are you telling yourself on the way up how do you is it mind over matter a lot of it you know and so um, it's it's fun to reflect on the mountain I'll reflect it back to life and an entrepreneurship because let's say fast forward when I was shutting down my business and I went through this massive burnout I you know went through this big depression all this stuff and it was like I was at that point climbing the hardest mountain of my life and that was, you know, way harder than Denali, way harder than Everest and everything else. And I had to tap into like, what was my formula on these mountains? Because like I was suffering and also like life stuff was happening. Like right when I first started climbing, I went through a divorce. Um, and then like fast forward, you know, like as an entrepreneur, I'm like trying to do all these things, but like financially it's really tough. So um, it has maybe, it doesn't sound so like intense, you know, um, of training but it really was and that was it's so much more than your body and your mind mm -hmm. to make it three weeks to two months on some of these expeditions I yeah. had to train my body no, no doubt right because I had to be able to like carry all the the gear and the physical what about endurance. food what, I mean what are you eating penguins on the no, way no, they're all, well they're work? all different they're all different <laughs> and then the other one was I had to train my mind because if your mind wasn't your best friend on these things, like you're not gonna make it. So, mm. and then I had to nourish my soul. Like, and that's where it's the power of these mountains. To me, they've become a really sacred spiritual space. Um, you get perspective of life. Like we're such a small little piece, oh, yes. but we're part of something so much bigger. And so, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot of, of course, like terrible things happening in the world, but whenever I'm in these like sacred open spaces and you're just like with the pure nature, you're just reminded like how amazing life is, how amazing it is to have the opportunity to be alive, to share space like with these majestic peaks. Yeah. And it makes all the suffering and everything worthwhile. I would love to add to that real quick. Um, for those that know me know that I've taken some big trips in my life. I mean, I'm not climbing mountains when I go there. I'm really doing the tourist thing when I go there. But for every big trip that I ever took, it was the result of a pivotal moment in my life. And so I looked to travel. And more specifically, I would travel to a place where there was a natural or man-made wonder of the world. Because mm -hmm. deep down, I'm a G-E-E-K, geek, especially when it comes to geography and world travel and world history. So often, like when I would miscarry or lose someone special, that's when I would book my trip. Mm -hmm. I would call my travel girls, my buddies from work, from People Magazine, and be like, where are we going next? Mama's going through something. <laughs> All right, we're going to Zimbabwe. Let's go. And that was a trip. I went to Victoria Falls, which is the largest cascading waterfall in the world. Mm -hmm. And that is what you just said. It was the goal of each trip which is when I would see Victoria Falls in all of its glory, and in Africa they refer to it as rolling thunder because you can hear the rolling waterfall from miles away. You can even see like the steam and the sprouting water from my hotel, which was miles away. I would absorb this nature, this wonder of nature, and it would just hit me. It would dawn on me that my miscarriage or this loss of someone is like a speck in the grand scheme of life and world and everything that it would just put things in perspective for me. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I would just be in my head and, oh my God, I lost this pregnancy and it's like the end of the world. No, it ain't, girl. Pick up the pieces and look around you and know that what you're going through is a pebble among this entire mountain. It's a speck on this entire canvas of art. And that's how you know, like people be like, oh, I see you living the good life. You're going to Africa, you know what I'm saying? Like belly, like Nas did. And I'm like, okay, uh, it's not really because t Boz convinced me to. Um, it's because I went through something and that was my medicine. Yeah. So is climbing your medicine? 
Yeah, it's a, it, I think it's a space for healing and reconnecting to myself. And I think nature is just an incredible healer. Yeah. And we can lose sight of that. I mean, I grew up in a city. I grew up in L.A. Um, and even when I'm in cities and if it's like a stressful time or whatever, what do I do? I go to the city park. Yeah. I go and like be with the trees and just take a pause and like be with them. And that now everyone's going to be like, okay, she's a tree hugger. I am. Um, There's you know, nothing wrong with but that. The yeah. thing is like, Damn. we need nature. We yeah. really do. Like, we've just been conditioned out of it because we live in cities and we have, you know, we order things from our phones and things arrive. But like ultimately we were, we were designed to cohabitate with nature. And so when I'm in the mountains, like I just, it, it reminds me, like it helps me remember and I think like if I think of the direction now with She Ventures, we say that we're a women and earth first company. Oh, I love that. It's helping women remember our inner nature too, right. you know, and coming back to our core and, and deconditioning from all this stuff that we've been programmed, right? What we need to look like, uh, you know, wear makeup things. I mean, obviously I'm wearing makeup and I like getting dressed up, so don't take me wrong, uh, you know. But it's coming back to our root, to our core, and I think nature really is the best place to, to do that. Earth is a female, Mother Earth, okay? <laughs> it's funny because the other day my sister, who's very spiritual and she's a yogi, um, she was like, guess what guys? I'm getting married. And of course my mother and I were like, what? Who is the lucky guy? Like what? You're like, this is crazy. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to marry the moon. Have you heard of this? Yeah. yeah. People, I guess, marry the moon. So of course my mother being the like Dominican comedian, she goes, okay, pero es la luna. So you're marrying a woman? Oh, I'm going to tell your father. Hey, you know, so it's interesting. She literally went into the woods with her oh, guitar and her drums and she married the moon. I'm in support of it. Yay. Look, if that's what's going to float your boat and make you happy, it's then go for it. So She Ventures, I just love what it stands for. Um, and it's so spiritual, like, in definition. It and it's taken that turn, you know, and I think that that's the beauty of business and purpose is that you are transferring whatever, you know, the company evolves as I evolve too, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. from what it initially was to where I see it going now. Um, is taking that direction and at first I shied away from the spirituality aspect of it because I didn't want it to take away from the the business aspect and helping women we say unleash their untapped power mm -hmm. and I truly believe that women are the largest untapped resource in the entire world mm. and that's just lack of access education health there's a lot of systemic issues like embedded in all this so imagine if as a collective global community, we helped women unleash their untapped power, what that would do for local economies, global economies, for our climate, like we are the change makers, like, you know, and yeah. so. And the uh, cycle breakers. Exactly. And a, lot of, and a lot of this is like our own deconditioning. You can call it deconditioning. I'm really trying to refer it now as remembering mm -hmm. our truth and giving ourselves that freedom to express our truth. And I acknowledge that, you know what, there's different mountains women are climbing all over the world. Like, no doubt, you know, women of color are climbing different mountains than, than other women. There's also parts of the world where women don't even have this opportunity to express their truth in any capacity. And so it's holding space for that, acknowledging that, and as women thinking about how we can help open those doors, you know. Um, not like savior mentality, but it's a it's a huge cultural shift, like globally, right? To to just get people to see. I'm always amazed at the comments I get. You know, oh, so you're like a feminist. You're this. You know, like it's a bad thing. It's like no, you know, we're never gonna have a peaceful, happy world if we keep creating all this division and you know, and only a small population percentage of the population gets to excel and succeed and innovate and create. 
that's not how we move the future forward. No. Well, you're about to move the future forward in a big way, Miss TED Speaker. <laughs> Hello. There's a TED Talk coming up with this gal next to me. So tell us how that came about, when it's going to be, where it's going to be, and what your subject matter is going to be for the talk. Sure. So I'm not giving all the details of the talk, but I will share. Um, Ooh, suspense. Yes. I the, love it. That the theme of the event, um, which is in California, is uh, dare to dream and so it aligned to the talk I've had planned for many years um, you know this let's talk about access and representation I've been applying to TEDx stages for 10 years I kid you not Wow. I finally wow, wow. <laughs> I finally got and you know people are like well how what was the difference this year I worked with a coach that specializes in getting women of color on stages Yes. Because I was like, clearly, I can't crack this code. And I haven't been able to crack that code on a TEDx. Well, now I have on a TEDx stage coming up in December. It's in December. The video will go live in January. So I'd right. love to share that with you all. Oh, we will share with the Eloeleros. I can't wait. Go and on. then, but you know, it's been the same, like, let's say, barrier mountain to like get a book published. Yeah. You know, I had an agent. I unfortunately had to fire them last year. Mm -hmm. And it was like these like moving guide like posts like from a publisher, like one of the top publishers that finally did a meeting with me. And they're like, OK, well, if you can triple your social media numbers, then we can do it. Say what now? I, I 10 x it and they still didn't give me the deal. Oh. And then I look at who they did offer deals to, because that's public information. You can sign up to Publishers Marketplace. Oh, thanks for sharing. Yeah, and then there's all these non-diverse authors that had like a quarter of my followers and Busted. they're getting deals, mm. six-figure deals. I was like, what does a woman have to do today? To like, And so, you know, all of these things, we can look at it as like um, victim mentality or all these things. And I, for me, I use it as information. And it also informs me that if I'm experiencing these challenges and I've done a lot of, I think, you know, cool things in my life and I continue to, if I'm having these blocks, imagine what other women are of facing. Of course. And so then I take it upon myself to have that respons responsibility to open those spaces. So going, yeah, so going back to the TED Talk, um, it is, it, Spoiler alert, there's mountains involved. <laughs> and no. But, you know, it's really tying back to what I was speaking to earlier around there was a sacred ritual that came with me on every mountain. And when life really tested me, because it's tested me in a lot of ways, that's the same sacred ritual I needed to apply to my life to be able to make it another day, you know. and. For anybody watching too, you know, if you faced discrimination, being underestimated, underpaid, like those are big mountains to like overcome like every damn day. And so, um, you know, but I think we just also like get used to it. It's like, well, this is life. Perseverance, yeah. right? Like we don't give up naturally. I think women, I mean, I, I guess everybody, if you've got it in you, that gusto, that might, but it's hard, you know? But I think with you, what's so interesting is that the climbing doesn't stop. I mean, I, I met you in 2007, and my, the heights that you have reached, I told you there was, this was gonna be a pun-infused <laughs> episode, because once I start, I can't stop, like the Energizer pun bunny. Um, but like, you keep on climbing. Where are you climbing to next? Now that you've reached TED, what's yeah, beyond TED? I mean. Well, that would be so nice if the actual TED conference <laughs> invites me. There's TEDx and then uh, there's TED. Yeah, right. waiting mm -hmm. for that invitation. Sure, great. Um, at the book, you know, I have to now find a new agent and find a new publisher. Knock, knock. Agents, are you listening? <laughs> knock, knock. Who is it? Georgina Miranda. Holler at me if you want me to connect you. And Go then ahead. the business. You know, the business will continue to grow. I have She Ventures business brand. And then my own personal brand, Georgina Miranda, has become its own brand because I still also like to work with men and I teach unconscious leadership. I write, I teach meditation. I'm also a yogi. Yeah. And I try to integrate that philosophy, those philosophies into my work because I just think that there's that opportunity right now, especially to integrate more mindfulness into our lives. First of all, giving ourselves space to pause. Yeah. I say a pause can be more powerful than another step. 
Oh, I love that. Let that penetrate. And a lot of people, you know, we're just like running, we're doing, and, and in meditation you learn that there's an art to being. And so that's something that we all can continue to learn because it's very easy to get caught in this it's rat sure race. So. Georgina, I ask this often to my guests but you are talking to a younger Georgina right now. She's out there. Hey, how you doing, <laughs> chiquita? Como tu ta? Um, what are some words of advice that you have for a younger you? Yeah, you know, I think that dreams are planted in us as children. And I think of, you know, the one dream that was planted in me was travel and visiting the seven continents. I would play with my godmother's globe in her house. I'd never been on a plane, never been out of LA. And that seed was planted and it's like transformed into something that I could have never imagined as a child. And as I got older and as I started sharing these dreams, you know, it goes back to the TED Talk theme of the event, right, Dare to Dream. Mm -hmm. There were plenty of people that's like, ooh, that's too big of a dream. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not for you. We know and people. so don't listen to that. Listen to your heart, and that sounds cheesy, but like we know our truth, we know what we're capable of, and unfortunately, there's always going to be the people around that are kind of question that. And sometimes it's their own fear, they're projecting their own For fear, sure. their own self doubts, their own thing. Like, you do you, you tune into you, and then let that be your guiding post. And of course, like you might like stumble along the way, like, I'm not perfect, I failed so many times in my life. I would probably feel a lot more, but like at least I'm attempting to listen and to take a step in that direction. And then, you know, like there's just the magic of the universe. Like, you know, you listen to your truth, it's going to guide you in, the, in magical places if you, if you allow it. You are so inspirational. You're so I, I mean, I was amazed by just learning about you way back when as a young marketer, but hearing you speak, I would love to be in the building for that TED Talk oh, or you. like just <laughs> listen to whatever you do. I can't wait for it to go live online. Um, I want to thank you for sharing this space here. Shout out to this space. Yes. Um, and if you would just drop your handles and tell everyone where they can follow you. Uh, your website is pretty amazing as well, like pretty robust. And there's beautiful pictures of her expeditions. And, there's just so much content on there. Congrats. I can see you're a writer. Yes, now, it's all making sense now. But yes, please drop your handles and let everybody know how they can follow your adventures. Perfect. The website's easy, georginamiranda.com. And it has all the social links on there. Uh, Georgina.ventures is Instagram. And then SheVentures is SheVentures.co, not com. <laughs> and the Instagram handle, there's a funny story why it's this, because... I made a mistake on Instagram <laughs> tell us, tell six us. years ago, but <laughs> wow. the Instagram for she ventures is she.ventures.co. And that's because I had like saved the she ventures handle, but then I like switched the email. Oh, and then there was no way to like bring it back to life. So some out there in the universe is the wrong is this is is the label that I had gotten? That's so. funny because somebody out there also did Latinos Out Loud on Instagram. I see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody's rocking Latinos Out Loud. So then I did. We are Latinos Out Loud. Yeah. But then I'm like, you know what? That makes more sense yeah. because we are Latinos Out Loud. She is a Latina Out Loud. That's the crux of this show. You know, Latinos Out Loud. Great name. Great acronym. Who comes up with this stuff? But it's bigger than that. It's that voice that we all have as Latinos, Latinas, X, Y, Z. Be loud. Be proud. Climb a mountain. Climb the steps of Castle Hill. Do whatever you got to do. But you could rise to the top, literally and figuratively. This is a very motivational episode. I'm probably going to listen to it three or four times. Uh, I hope you do too. I find that when I listen to an episode more than once, I catch something that I missed the first, second, or third time. But anywho, um, and if you're going to listen to us more than once, listen to us on different platforms so we get the download. Thanks. Okay. Uh, this has been a wonderful episode. I want to thank Georgina Miranda. No, thank you. This is like such a joy to reconnect heart. and thank you it's for cold. creating space because it's so needed thank you. I think the you know as a small business owner and somebody that helps a lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs Latinos are the fastest growing community in small businesses 
but yet we get the least amount of financing and resources and things. And so, you know, I'm going to put a shout out, like tag your favorite like Latino founded business yes. products, share yes. it. We have to help each other. And so I'm just so grateful because this is what it's about. It's helping each other. It's helping create community awareness to the amazing work we do, demanding that we get paid equally, yes, <laughs> that we, we get the same amount of opportunities. Latina you know? Equal Pay Day just passed the other day. It's important that we talk about that year round. Exactly. And I want to add a statistic that I recently found out. I went to the United Nations last week, Flex, and um, I learned it was a, a Latino business sort of entrepreneurship in the Americas Forum. And I learned that the one segment that is starting the most businesses in this country. I'll give you two guesses. Go ahead, take your time. Mm -hmm. Latinas. Yeah. Latinas are starting up more businesses than any other segment in this country. Shout out to us. And we need the funding. We need the support, you know? All those accelerator programs. Please, come to us. Accelerate your way into my bank account, okay? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you again for coming on the show Thank and for you. dropping so many wonderful snow-ridden gems. Um, I'm just, I'm cold just listening to your stories. Also, it's very cold in the studio, but like, I can't even imagine. I don't do the cold well, y'all. I don't, like. Frost nip, frost bite, uh-uh, stay that way. <laughs> go, go frost someplace else. Only frost I'm willing to like bite into is a Klondike bar. Okay, on that note, hello, aleros. Thank you so much for rocking out for yet another episode. Please shout us out at We Are Latinos Out Loud. You can follow me at Rachel La Loca. That's R-A-C-H-E-L, La Loca. You can also give us a call, no big whoop, 978-LATINOS. It's 978-LATINOS. It's not a sex hotline. Although if you want to drop a message like that, fine. I'm just going to hit delete anyway. But drop us a message, leave us a voicemail. Who do you want to see on the show? Give us a call, leave some comments. Thanks so much for your support. On that note, we out. The Latinos Out Loud Podcast. Oh!